When I was young, my brother and I built a boat with our father. We spent several years sailing and exploring the Patuxent River. And then I met Tony. Peter and I spent many happy times on that boat. And so when we got married, we built a larger boat and ventured out into the Chesapeake Bay and its many rivers. We crewed on larger boats with dreams of sailing the world, but then life took another turn. Today, we look forward to retirement with dreams of leaving it all behind. Come join us on our journey to sail the seas. Welcome to episode seven, I believe. Uh, we're calling this episode Sailing the Sea Wind 1160 for the day. What happened was we had an opportunity to charter the Sea Wind 1260 out of the South River in Edgewater, Maryland. And we packed up our gear, we packed up our food, and when we got there, there was an electrical issue going on with the 1260, so it wasn't ready for us to go out. And so they offered up the 1160. And we looked at each other and said, why not? 1160 was a boat that we were considering. Um, it, was, it was a great boat, and the Chesapeake Bay was really choppy that day. So what are your thoughts of the 1160? I like the 1160. I thought it was, you know, not having gotten on the 1260 yet, I thought it was pretty roomy. It seemed to me to be, didn't seem that much smaller to me than the 1260, and the interior was kind of similar. There was the differences in the the, the tables, like the edges and the, um, the type of wood it was and that kind of thing, and the edges were more cornered off on the tables and things, but as far as space, it seemed equally as spacious as the 1260, at least it, you know, at, from first impression. Um, the the thing that always gets me about the 1160 is the, 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 the space under the seats in the cockpit. There is still about that much space where it's kind of open. And so there was a fear of losing your cell phone and for us having grandchildren. I, I don't want to lose a grandchild off of there. <laughs> so that part's is the one thing that still bothers me but everything else was nice i like the way the seats set up in the back that you could kind of you could have visibility from anywhere in the cockpit so i kind of liked it. it it was a nice day for sailing we took our daughter with us i uh, heard she had one job and that was to film while i was learning all the ropes about the <laughs> boat um so enjoy this episode we sailed Go Slow, a Sea Wind 1160 light, but she was anything but slow. Go Slow was referring to taking the time to enjoy life, which we did. Our daughter Monica was up from Florida, and she joined us to help with documenting the trip, as we wanted to take in all that Captain Mike had to show us with sailing a Sea Wind. I will give everyone fair warning. I think the lighthouses along the Chesapeake Bay are the most beautiful, most romantic, and most remote. Whenever we sail past one, I will immediately become distracted and share some information about the lighthouse. This is Thomas Point Lighthouse, the most photographed lighthouse of the Chesapeake Bay. Built in 1875, it is the last screw pile cottage lighthouse on the bay that's still in its original location. It was manned up to 1985. And I remember waving to the Coast Guard man as we passed by while crewing on various boats during races. The Thomas Point Lighthouse has six dormers, which makes it distinguishable from other screw pile cottage lighthouses, which only have two. The Thomas Point Lighthouse warns mariners of the Thomas Point Shoal that extends far from shore. It sits just south of the Severn River and the entrance to Annapolis. On a clear day, you can see Thomas Point Lighthouse from the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. I'm looking forward to soon be sailing on No Worries, Mom. We're not naming the boat guy. What? Why not? No way. I was surprised at how responsive the helm of the 1160 was. It did not feel like you were sailing a 38-foot boat. I tried to experience all the features that the Sea Wind had. I tested and quickly became spoiled by the auto helm, which did a great job with this Chesapeake chop. These seats were really comfortable and visibility was great. They sit up high enough 
that you can see all around and so you can keep watch from them if you want it. We were sailing along here at about seven to eight knots. We were slicing and dicing through these waves. Visibility was great from both helm positions. And if you wanted to, you could even sit up higher. The wide open hatches allowed all the apparent wind to flow through the saloon into the cockpit, allowing the cockpit to remain cool in the heat of the day. Unlike the C-1260, the 1160 lacked a settee and table in the cockpit, but it did allow room for other stuff such as this large cooler. Tony and I really miss the peace and tranquility that sailing brings. The sound of the water gently gurgling between the halls, only broken by conversations. Um, and my father built one. We were still working on Cap 17. Right, we said, yeah, how long is it going to take us to that boat building? My boss. Three years. And this is why we have built a Dad. Bags were quite comfortable and versatile. We might have to reconsider the forward lounge cushion option on the 1260. It seemed as quickly as the day started, we were already making our way back to the marina. The issue with the C1260 was resolved. We moved our gear and supplies to the 1260 and settled in for the night. Anyway, that was sailing the 1160. I wish we had more video rather than snapshots. Uh, we did learn our lesson. The boat handled very well. The bay was extremely choppy. The, the pictures and the video really didn't do it justice. It was a typical Chesapeake Bay chop. And that boat glided through the waves with those bows rather nicely. And only a few times the waves came over, over the bow. But I liked the 1160 a lot better than I did before sailing it for the day. When she, she handled great. The helm was responsive. She tacked flawlessly. A slight weather helm, um, but all in all, it was a very nice boat. The complaint I still have was the cover, because I did get sunburn going out for the day, because the cover, the coach roof, just didn't come out far enough as, as the, the 1260. And those back openings, I think if we had put some netting back there, 
to keep grandkids and stuff from poking their heads out might have been fine if we had let, ended up with 1160 i think we would have been happy i think we would have been a, it would have been a good boat for us it what was very thoughts? it was really comfortable i like the galley the galley isn't a lot different from the 1260 it's it's maybe a little bit smaller a little yeah. maybe a little bit less well probably a little bit less cabinet space but didn't worry about that because we weren't on there long enough but it was very comfortable making lunch that day and um very spacious we had lunch in the cockpit and and in the sal saloon and um it turned out very nice i was really happy with it i i again the only thing that bothered me about that boat was the space under the you know where the stuff can fall through it, it was very stable. It was a quite a windy day. I loved it. It was, I was, I felt comfortable. I moved around on the boat very easily up front and down in the cockpit and down below. And, um, I wasn't worried at all. And it was, it was yeah. just a really nice day. A beautiful sail. It was a sail. beautiful day sailing. And I think in those conditions on, on the old trimaran that we had, we would have taken a little bit of a pounding. Probably, and but, that's but what I like boat, about this. It was just comfortable. Yes. It handled the Chesapeake was chop nice. quite well. It was, and well, you didn't have your dolphin seats. No, I didn't have the dolphin I, I seats. I assume you, you know, if you worked hard, you probably could get dolphin seats. Yeah, those are the seats up front on the 1260. There's these little seats. I love that spot because the wind just, you know, you just one with the water it's right there and the breeze and the sun and the sky it's this so boat cool. didn't have backrest at the helm stations I, I at first i thought that the backrest might have been taken off for repairs because you had that slot there for them but we saw the same boat at the annapolis boat show a couple months later and it still didn't have the backrest so i don't know if the backrest is an option on mm. 1160 or they took it over this was 1160 light by the way so you had the two outboards in there, but I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad we got It was the very nice. I'm glad we were able to get, uh, have that day on that boat. Yes. It gave us the opportunity to compare. The next episode, we will be sailing the 1260. Well, it's supposed to be for five days or five nights, and now it's five yeah. days, four nights. Yeah. Something exactly. like we got to spend the night on it. We learned a whole lot of stuff about sailing the 1260. So stay on the lookout for episode eight i guess if, yeah. if i can get it all on uh on the, in the cutting room we'll we'll try to get that out in february yeah are we done i think so okay we still have to name this boat we still have to come up with names on this boat i like passing wind oh no uh, no 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 well we're still discussing names on the boat anyway it won't be that mm -mm. i'm peter <laughs> and i'm tony <laughs> We'll see you next episode. If you like what you see, hit the like button, the subscribe button, wherever that is. Thank you. Bye-bye.